Good evening. A lot of standard video games have secrets. Weird little tidbits that build off the average player's natural curiosity to build a subculture of hunting and showing off. Gary's Mod, despite being far from a standard video game, also has its fair share of secrets and oddities. In fact, one might argue it has more than any other game. Some of these secrets are left by the game's developers themselves, some are left by community members. Some of these secrets are well known, some are very obscure. Some of these secrets are intended to be funny, and some of them are downright creepy. I've encountered a lot of weird stuff in Gmod across my many, many hours of play, and I'd like to share some of my most interesting discoveries with the world. So join me, if you will, as we explore Gmod's biggest secrets. First, let's have a look at the maps. You probably know that on its own, Gary's Mod only comes with two maps, those being GM Construct and GM Flatgrass. Both of these maps have interesting details that people might consider easter eggs, but perhaps the most celebrated Gmod secret appears in GM Construct. If you boot up this map and crouch underneath the walkway beside the brick warehouse building here, then crouch through a hidden crawlway to the right of the Lambda Locator insignia, you'll be let into the secret credits room. Inside contains a sign listing the map's contributors, Colton Rape, Gary Newman, Grossel, Hidden Mist, Max of S2D, and Stinger21. There's also a sink, two couches, and a table with a peculiar doll sitting on it. In case you didn't know, this doll model was made by Max of S2D and serves as his signature. He also created a number of other models that come with Gary's mod like the hot dog, hamburger, and the Gary Newman painting, and is responsible for a few other easter eggs we'll get to later. I also played Gmod Zombie Survival with him a decade ago. Note that on the walls of the secret room there's loads of graffiti from Half-Life 2 and big numbers reading 13, denoting the version of Gary's mod this map was made for, Gmod 13. There's also a completely different secret present in the earlier version of Construct from Gmod 12. If we boot up an old copy of the game, then no clip out of bounds under the roof access stairs of the garage spawn building, we'll find another credits room, this time a bit trippier and with a much longer, more thorough list. Since the earlier versions of Construct were pretty much made single-handedly by Gary, I think this must have been a more general thank you to people who had helped with Gmod itself. Fun fact, do you see the name Davor? That's one of Gmod's only modelers, and his work predates Max's. I've never met the guy, but I know that he's responsible for the camera, the original buttons, TNT, and even the original hoverballs. These props are all still contained within a folder in the game named after him. I'm sure some guy in the comments will recognize a few more of these names on the wall and probably share some more insight about some of Gmod 13 Construct's creation, but for now, let's move on to Gmod's only other official map, Flatgrass. For a big chunk of Gary's Mod's life, Flatgrass was straight up just a field in a void with a tiny concrete block in the middle. But when the map was remade for Gmod 13, it was expanded, brightened up a bit, and fitted with an all new 3D skybox to make it look a little bit more like an actual location. It was also given some new, interesting details. No clipping into the side of the main, uh arch structure no clipping into the side of the main structure reveals another secret room with max of s2d's secret signature doll in it though this time it's stationary and can't be removed without some technical console shenanigans because this room is way more vacant than the construct one and is also pretty much impossible to access without no clip it's always been a lot less popular but i think it still serves its purpose as a good place for admin sets another intriguing thing of note about flat grass is that with a closer look at the skybox, we can spot the silhouette of GM Construct in the distance. This implies the two are in close proximity. Ain't that neat? Before we move on, I want to give some honorable mentions to the secrets that appear in Counter-Strike Source maps, since they're popular picks for game modes like Prop Hunt and Trouble in Terrace Town. There's this secret inaccessible room on Piranesi that has a meticulously handcrafted brushwork giraffe, this Turtle Rock Barn and CS Militia's skybox, and a room far, far out of bounds of CS Assault that features nothing but a lone boot. People to this day still have pretty much no clue why the boot and giraffe rooms were added, and I find them fascinating. There's more quote unquote official secrets in Gary's Mod that I'm going to share a little bit later down the line. But first, I want to share some big secrets from famous community maps. To start us off, how about the most popular custom Gary's Mod map of all time, GM Big City by Bigwig. This map has more than a few secrets in it, and pretty much all of them are located in the same quadrant. First, there's this Cafe Baltic building. Walking towards its entrance and pressing E on the door will jump scare the player with the sound of a stalker from Half-Life 2 screaming. <laughs> Just across the street from Cafe Baltic is a dingy garage area, and in it is a drop-down door with blood trailing out of it, marked by the graffiti of a skull. Pressing E on this door will play the creepy pitch-down sound of Father Grigori from Half-Life 2 laughing. <laughs> I 
I could have sworn there was another stage of this secret wherein if you spammed the door too much, you would for just a moment be transported to a replica of the same room with a body hanging from the ceiling. But I haven't been able to replicate that or find any evidence of it. There's a good chance that what I'm remembering happened on one of the many edits of Big City, but I'm not sure. Maybe some guy in the comments will know what I'm talking about. Or maybe I'm just crazy. The last real secret in Big City is also nearby Cafe Baltic. If you drop down off this ledge, or follow through this long alleyway to avoid fall damage, you can access a tunnel that leads to a weird red industrial hallway. Following that through will lead you to a set of ominous doors. Pressing E on these will teleport you to a secret room overlooking the spawn area. How? I don't know. These two areas are very far away from each other. I guess it's some kind of fast travel. This secret room is bound with teleport triggers that stop you from accessing it with traditional noclip, which is kind of annoying. If you bust open a wall panel next to the entrance, you can pull a seemingly alive Noam Chomsky out of it. He'll scream lines from the Half-Life 2 citizens at you, and if you punt him around too much, he'll say, That's it. Fine. Best. And violently jolt around the room to try to kill you. Couldn't make this up if I tried. One thing I find funny about this room is that it kind of resembles the secret room in Gmod 13's construct, with the scuffed up posters on the wall and all. The thing is that Big City predates Gmod 13 by multiple years. So I like to think that in a weird roundabout way, Big City was an inspiration to Gmod's devs. Big City also has a few other areas that aren't quite secret, but are definitely obscure. The first place that comes to mind is this sniper spot that gives you a clear vantage point of the whole spawn area, and this little bunker in the canals with nothing in it. Also, I've never actually seen a server hosting GM Big City improved, but I do know that it adds another secret room in the corner of the map opposite the Cafe Baltic building. How about GM Atomic? Yeah, you remember this? One of the first videos on my channel was about this map. Just like Big City, Atomic is made by Bigwig. Weird that two of the biggest maps in the game's history were made by the same guy, eh? And guess what? I fucked up my Atomic video. I didn't actually understand the map's secret. See, there's a secret room underneath the outhouse behind the gas station, protected by bounding teleport brushes just like the secret room in Big City. To get footage of it in my original video, I just rammed a camera through the toilet to get a look inside. But as it turns out, you're supposed to take this familiar garden gnome that you can find in a hidden vent in the map's underground bunker, and then shove that down the outhouse toilet hole to properly access the secret. At this point, the gnome will start screaming because he's covered in feces, and you'll be granted legitimate access to the secret room. And I know I already mentioned it in my Atomic video, but for those who might not have seen it, this text on the wall is a reference to Gary's Goons, the now defunct official Gmod server of the Something Awful forms. I actually have something else really interesting to share with you guys about Atomic. There's a secret on this map that's so obscure that no source on the internet seems to have ever documented it. Let me explain. Bigwig left a comment on my GM Atomic video mentioning that there's a secret way back into the spawn room involving trains. I had no idea what he was talking about, and neither did any of my friends. Decompiling the map revealed to us that if you go to this destroyed train on the border of the map and interact with it in just the right spot, it does indeed teleport you back to the map spawn area. Now, I know some guy in the comments is gonna say, Oh, well I knew about that. But I've played on this map for countless hours and I never knew about it. There's no videos on YouTube I could find documenting it. None of my friends knew about it, and even the creator of the map says everyone missed it. It's kind of crazy to think a secret like this could go under so many people's noses for more than a decade. Anyway, let's move on. Gmod 13 Hotels is a weird sandbox roleplay hybrid map. I remember it being one of the first maps to grow to popularity in Gmod 12's wake. This map is pretty expansive and always had a bit of a weird, unsettling edge. A blue void and seemingly endless towers. Anyway, there's a secret, creepy-ass, abandoned part of the hotel that you can access by going down this elevator shaft. It's actually a little spooky to explore. I kept hearing doors behind me opening and closing, and I wasn't sure if the map was doing it on purpose or not. Anyway, down there is a locked door with blood trailing out from it. Head into this room down the hall and pick up this baby doll, then return, and you'll find the door is now unlocked. Heading in, it's a creepy, dingy room with a radio and a... <laughs> Sharple jump scare. But wait, there's more! This map also makes frequent use of the same Lambda Locator insignia seen in the Construct Credits room, and it denotes that whatever room it's in has a breakable surface. There's a bunch of these all around the map, and I'd recommend exploring it yourself. The one that's most notable, however, is this floor, which collapses into a series of tunnels. Explore them far enough, and you'll come across a campfire, which reveals to the player via text on screen the legend of a rat man dwelling in the Dark Pit. If we head over to this aforementioned Dark Pit, and either no clip or prop surf into this hole in the wall, we'll be first granted more exposition about how the rat man escaped prison in 1984 and has been living in these tunnels since, and then we'll come face to face with the man himself. He's an invincible stalker NPC from Half-Life 2, stilting around and occasionally shrieking. We can also come across his little hideout with his mattress and radio. Humble living. You can hear this guy's noises throughout the entirety of the tunnels, by the way. It sucks. 
This map has a lot of other weird secrets, like a locked administrator room with buttons that display the map maker's name and blow up the lower floor of the hotel, but none of them are as intriguing as the Ratman one, so for the sake of time, I'm gonna move on. Branching away from the outwardly intentionally spooky stuff and more into regular oddities, the roleplay map Evo City has a cave that, upon entering, will reliably crash your game. In fact, it'll crash the whole server you're on. Admins used to have to board this area up to stop griefers from accessing it. Is this even intentional? Who knows? Old school players will remember Free Space, which is a hallmark map in Gary's Mod's history with tons of versions. The original builds don't have much that resemble a secret outside of developer contact info, but in the popular Gmod 13 remake, there's a very peculiar easter egg. Head to the town on the outskirts of the map, hop on top of this building and press E on the chimney, then look off to the forest. Wow. Okay, all those community map secrets are fine and dandy, and I'm hoping at least some of you guys found them interesting, but I promised more official secrets. What happened to that? Let's start off simple. Gary's Mod has an achievement called Secret Phrase. Open up or join any game and type in chat Block Switch. If you didn't know, Block Switch Hall is where Face Punch Studios offices used to be located in England. In Gmod 12, the secret phrase was Rusty Bullet Hole. That was simply a bizarre and obscure slang for butthole. I have never heard this slang, but maybe it's a British thing. You probably know about the act commands, little animations that interrupt your movement and quickly switch you to a third person perspective to watch them, just like TF2 taunts. There's 16 of them being agree, beckon, bow, cheer, dance, disagree, forward, group, halt, laugh, muscle, purse, robot, salute, wave, and zombie. One thing you probably didn't know is that a couple of these animations seem to originate from a very weird and perverse Japanese music video from 2008. It turns out one of these animations also appeared in the Adult Swim show Xavier Renegade Angel back in 2007, so chances are they actually just come from a stock animation library. Still bizarre to spot the Gmod dance in the wild though. What about secret NPCs? If you turn on SV Cheats 1 in the console and type NPC Create NPC Ichthyosaur or NPC Sniper, you can spawn NPCs that are not present on the normal sandbox spawn menu. The Ichthyosaur is a monster from Half-Life 1 that briefly appears in the scripted teleport sequence from the start of Half-Life 2, and it doesn't have any AI other than biting you if you get too close. The Sniper is an enemy that you're really not supposed to see until after he dies, since in Half-Life 2 they appear in black windows that you're supposed to blow up. Fun fact! A friendly version of the sniper NPC is used to represent Alex manning a sniper rifle in episode 2. And if you land a grenade just right, you can also kill it. Anyways, the last secrets I want to share are hidden messages that appear in the texture files of models in the game. The models in question are the Hoverball and Gary painting made by Max of S2D. Remember him? Originally, the painting model's texture had text reading, Man, there's a ton of wasted UV space in that corner. I wish I could get Anne use for it, but this is a silly painting prop that I didn't even warn Gary about. I think we'll have to live with these kilobytes of wasted texture memory. Max of S2D was here, in your Gmod 13. Recently the texture was changed to a QR code that if you scan it indicates Max is embarrassed by that old secret. The hoverball, on the other hand, has text reading, Max of S2D is in your hoverballs. Oh baby. And that, I think, is a good place to leave things. Videos like this can never get everything, so feel free to mention your own trivia in the comments. Maybe I'll make a part two if enough people care. Anyway, thanks for watching, have a good day. Oh wait, actually, before you go, allow me to let you in on the biggest secret of all. That secret is Gary's mod story. There's more than meets the eye when it comes to flat grass, which was known as Flattywood before the area's deforestation was ordered by the US Department of Defense. So goes that herbicides and eventually napalm were used to wipe the region's flora, while billions of taxpayer dollars were invested in the construction of an expansive underground bunker and the excavatory leveling of the above ground. What remains is a mysterious and uncharacteristically flat restricted area deep within the American Great Plains, rumored to be testing grounds for classified experimental government technology. Though this backstory is subtly hinted at through details like the flatty wood sign and the doll safe room that alludes to the inaccessible bunker below the map, it's highly unlikely that any of this plot would have ever been figured out or brought to light if not for the recent discovery of the Gary's Mod 13 game manual and promotional CD, which was up until recently considered lost media. Join me next time for a deep dive into the contents of these rare collector's items. There's a freak named Rick the Overtime, but to me he's Rick the Blow the Time, Rick the...
hope you have an escape plan. Cause Richter, you was a gay man. Today our guest is Richter Overtime. But he's a freak named Richter Blower Time. Richter, hope you have an escape plan. Cause Richter, you is a gay man. Today our guest is Richter Overtime. But he's a freak named Richter.